All right, we are live. Friday, Mike and Mario show. Excited to connect. Running a little bit behind, but uh, scrambling on the back end. But we're we're here nevertheless. Uh, Mario, how you doing, yeah. my friend? Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, my wife and I are going out later on uh, for to see some friends, and the weather's uh, warmed up a little bit. It was a, a bit chilly, actually. So yeah. uh, no, everything's fine. Uh, the world's still mad out there, I would say, and. Uh, we're going to start looking at the uh, PCE, I guess. Yeah. So let's uh, let's jump right in. And so, of course, just to set a foundation, we've seen just complete lies given to us from the mainstream media. All the financial pundits uh, would like to have us believe there's no recession. So we've had Yellen, Powell and Biden all come out preaching against a recession, even though the stats reveal that that's what is going on. So I'll just jump into this. Uh, Zero Hedge article real quick, and then I got a couple sound bites that I have to play just because uh, we, we can't not touch on those things. But I'll zoom in a little bit, zoom out some. There we go. But anyway, um, yeah, so fifth, uh, favorite inflation indicator jumps a new 40-year high. Savings rates plunge. And so as you guys can see here, the stats doesn't lie whatsoever. Uh, but Mario, when you saw this, give me your thoughts. What do you, what did you, what did you first think about when you saw these, these uh, metrics here? Well, you know, the PCE is what the Fed uses, and they use that because it underestimates the real uh, debasement of the dollar, I would say, or the rise in general prices. Uh, it wasn't surprising, though, it came out in line. Mm -hmm. But all it says is that, uh, yeah, the central banks, they're, they're really between a rock and a hard place. And I think they're going to pivot very soon. Uh, even though uh, in Europe we've gone uh, from minus uh, half a percent to zero. And we yeah. also saw a uh, CPI in Spain is over double digits. Uh, we've got the U Eurozone CPI as well came out higher than expected. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there, there was talk earlier this week from uh, Ernst & Young, um, which is like a consultancy accountants. Uh, yeah. They said that CPI could reach 15% in the UK this year. Mm -hmm. and, and we are only at one and a quarter percent. So they're way behind. And if they, they try to accelerate more the, these rate hikes, the whole uh, house of cards uh, will uh, tumble. Right, right. I, I agree. And that's the thing, like based upon, and, and, I, and as I mentioned before we went live, just seeing how I looked at the crypto stats as well as gold and silver and everything was green. I'm thinking like, you know, given all the current, indicators you know reflecting that things are not too positive how exactly were they able or are they able to squeeze this out or is this you know consumer sentiment running towards the, you know i you know safe havens i are gold and silver as well as speculative assets like crypto or what but first thing came to mind was you know the great late great rob kirby how he talked about the exchange stabilization fund always being used to prop up things in particular stock market but even though you said the stock market is not really doing yeah. much now but just like, you know, it's not it's not what I would expect, but here it is what it is. My view is that um, what the uh, markets are uh, discounting now and sniffing is mm -hmm. that uh, the pivot is going to come soon and, and that mm -hmm. the central banks are going to have to stimulate. So they're jumping ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really think the PPT is... Uh, uh, like active right now, they, they're usually active really when the market crashes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not too sure they, they spend a lot of time worrying about pumping it up. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think it's more the fact ever since uh, the FOMC, uh, uh, let's say results came out on Wednesday and uh, Jay Powell uh, uh, did his press conference, the markets uh, have gone up, uh, precious metals, uh, cryptos, the stock market, and actually yeah. the stock market is picking up a little bit here now. Uh, yeah. The S&P is actually up almost 1%. Uh, NASDAQ is up 1%. It's the Dow that's lagging a little bit behind. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's what the markets are, are discounting now. That um, And also we've seen uh, bond yields go, go down a lot, which means mm -hmm. that uh, they, they expect uh, the Fed to have to uh, probably stop raising rates and uh, yeah. Powell said as well that uh, they're going to stop uh, forward guidance, which means they can change uh, their policy now anytime, depending on yeah. the numbers. And, and we saw yesterday that that GDP number was really, you know, minus 0.9. It was right. expected 0.5. Uh, 
So <laughs> even, over, not a, even overshot not a, that one. <laughs> it's not a recession, of course, but maybe yeah. you want to play some clips. Yeah. So now uh let me I was just gonna yeah, I have a I have a couple of them real quick and then I'm gonna share my thoughts. And so let me grab this one here. So I like to just go back throughout the week and just put some of the narrative together and how uh, things have all of a sudden changed. And this one here is uh let me grab this here. Uh this is I'll just play it as you guys hear it. Today's Fed Chairman, uh, the Fed Chairman Powell said, made it clear that he doesn't think the U.S. economy is currently in a recession. He said, quote, there are too many areas of economic where the economy is performing too well. I said too well, T-O-O, too well. He pointed to the labor market as an example. The best thing we can do right now is put our economy in a better position to make the transition to stable, steady growth for, its, for Congress to, uh, and if steady, stable growth is for Congress to act. That's the best thing we can do. They're, they're voting right now, as I said. Another Congress should do it with uh, uh, another thing that Congress should do is to pass the Inflation Reduction Act to lower prescription drug costs, which would reduce the deficit, I might add, and help ease inflationary pressures and ensure that 13 million Americans can continue to save an average of $800 per year in their health care premiums. That makes a big difference. Both of these bills are going to help the economy continue to grow, bring down inflation, and make sure we aren't giving up on. All right, I'll, I'll spare you that, Mario. I'll spare you that. But <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. the Inflation Reduction Act, like just those buzzwords, like, you know, like it, think about the complete opposite of that is what uh, we should expect from that. But uh, creating co- more currency to fight the current currency issue we have, it, it never ceases to fail, does it? <laughs> no. And uh, you, you sent me an article from the New York Post about this yeah. Inflation Reduction Act and reading through it. Uh, I mean, what I got from it. And uh, you don't even have to read the details to know that anything that's passed by Congress is not uh, going to lower inflation. You know, the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 is destroyed yeah. the dollar, right, which is inflation. But in this one, I, if reading that article, it seems like it's a, it's like a climate change, uh, build back better, uh, mm-hmm. number two, uh, mm-hmm. with a cover of... Uh, reducing inflation right and, and they labeled it inflation reduction act but then yeah. they jammed so much stuff in there that is the basically it's a snippet from the build back better act in and of itself like so that that's what i expect more of just because they're using the weather as well yeah. as you know, medical you know say he said save eight hundred dollars and of course that that right yeah. plays on the affordable care act which is not so affordable but then again it's amazing how uh, just the idea is that you know they, they're giving us these bogus numbers as if it'll yeah. actually matter. Reduce well, uh, one one thing they uh, they're gonna do to uh, supposedly re- reduce uh, the deficit is employ more people at the uh, IRS. Right. Uh, to, so so, so how, how much is that really gonna save uh, in right. terms of uh, you know getting more tax? I, I don't. I, it's it's totally. Uh, like you said, it's, it's just for show. It's, it's just for show. As we would say, it's ass backwards, you know, the part of my French. But uh, and, and a part of providing funds for the IRS, it has everything to do with the, the previous IRS, uh, uh, you know, plea that they came for saying that they need, I think it was 80, 80, it was some 80 million or some large number to help uh, modernize the IRS with the automated process and all the things they want, they're trying to do. So basically, as they say, you know, hold people accountable for, you know, not having paid their fair share of taxes. And of course, they sell it as if we're going after the rich, but they're talking about doing more audits on your everyday mom and pops. It's like, okay, how, what, so they're, you know, most of those people are not evading tax because they're not, you know, they don't have anything to evade with. But anyway, you know, we know, we know what's going on with that. But uh, let me share with you, you have something to say? Yeah. The other thing about this uh, inflation reduction is that, um, they're going to increase corporate taxes Correct. Uh, and, and corporate taxes. Uh, the article said uh, corporations never pay tax because they pass it on to the consumer. So yeah. it won't make it, it will make it even worse. So may, maybe you could put that other clip about uh, his, well, when uh, yeah, Biden I'll was my president, his, his boss said something about that, didn't he, about taxation. Right. So here's that part you're referring to about raising taxes. And then here is, you know, here is something that would have been considered common sense or practical knowledge, you know, two administrations ago. But I'll let you guys hear for yourself. In a recession, the last thing you want to do is to, you don't raise taxes in a recession. The last thing you want to do is to raise taxes in the middle of uh, a recession. You don't. So the last thing you want to do is to raise taxes in the middle of a recession. In a recession. But then again, Mario, here's the thing. According to Yellen, 
Biden and Powell, we're not in a recession. So maybe it's it, you can do that now because we're not in a recession. So how long can they get along? How long can they get away from the truth? And then you also mentioned a possible Fed pivot. So that gives us August all the way to September 20th. So that's approximately 450 days between now and that time frame. And of course, the war drums between China, Taiwan, all that stuff is beating pretty, pretty, pretty loud nowadays with, you know, Putin putting a red line in the sand as far as what he will not tolerate. So the question is, will there be an event that will cover up the recessionary facts or will they actually pivot on, on schedule? I, I still have my reservation saying that, you know, I expect an event to, uh, to be the excuse rather than them giving in on the fact that the economy is the problem itself. But I'll, leave, I'll let you, I'll let, I'll, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. We got about 50 days or so. But what are your thoughts on that? Like, will it be some event? Is this an ideal framework for an event of some kind? Yeah, definitely. Uh, but um, what, what it will be is very difficult to say, even though a lot of people are talking about Taiwan, the fact that uh, Pelosi looks like she's going over there. But mm -hmm. then I saw a headline uh, on Twitter uh, about half an hour ago saying that uh, Biden uh, said that uh, he doesn't think that Taiwan should be independent. So there's a lot of uh, like... Uh, Back and forth. You know, uh, yeah, cognitive dissonance. They're trying to like confuse people. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it's a tough one. That's how difficult it is for the central banks. They really need something to to have an excuse to uh, to pivot, to stop raising rates. But right. as I've noted before on some of my videos the the fed's not really unwinding its balance sheet mm -hmm. that much i think they've done 25 billion so far and they're yeah. supposed to have done uh i think 90 billion <laughs> total in uh june and july mm -hmm. so they're dragging their feet hmm. so uh, you know we all know that they can't really reduce the way that uh they're trying to sell it to the public but then again if you have so many other events going on around you it makes it very uh uh, uh, it makes it more likely that people won't pay attention to those fine details of what they already promised just because of the lack of forward guidance moving forward lets us know that uh, at any minute things will change. So, but beyond all that, um, indicators are still popping up uh, as to what's really going on. Let me share with you, if I can, just more little visual aids that I actually grab it. Give me one second here. I want to share with you more indicators of that, uh, of what's happening in the main street. And it happens to be with the lack of disposable income, which, you know, we're already setting all time highs trending downward. But let me grab this little clip, little picture here to show you what's happening. And this is just in the U.S., of course, but it's happening all over the world. But as I pull this up here, you will be able to see it as well. Um, but oops, wrong one. Hmm. But we have this one. Another Fred update here. And so just look throughout history, man. This wow. is. <laughs> We're setting records of all all types, and we've never seen this in the last what fifty wow. years of this being measured. So, so, does this mean the economy is doing great if people have less disposable? I'm, I'm I'm being <sighs> I'm being sarcastic. Right. I mean, this is how can you say an economy is doing great? You have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, mm -hmm. and, and you've got disposable income at I, I mean sixty year low. Right. I mean. Fell off the cliff. This is, this is the definition of falling off the cliff. And in that, in that little rant I gave you earlier with Biden talking about what Jerome Powell said, as if like, you know, come on now. It, it, only a fool would believe that. Yeah. So, But we know what's happening. Um, yeah, and here in the UK but, as well, mm -hmm. if you, uh, I uh, don't know if uh, I've sent you the article, but basically I, I saw a story today that uh, about almost 2 million uh, homeowners in the UK uh, next year, their mortgages are going to come due because in the UK, people take a lot of uh, like uh, two year fixed deals, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's based on long term rates. It's for two years. Yeah. A and in uh, last year, the rates were really low at 0 0.1 Bank of England. Mm -hmm. Some mortgage rates were at one percent. Mm -hmm. And uh, next year, they're all coming due these deals. They're all going to. Uh, uh, mature yeah. and uh with the bank of england probably raising rates a, a bit more probably above two percent mm -hmm. right now we're one and a quarter and we were at 0.1 late last year uh, yeah. a lot of people are gonna have a shock and um yeah and this is uh if you add this to all the uh, utility bills going up 
Yeah. You know, the, there's more talk that uh, uh, utility bills are going to be even higher, you know, mm-hmm. this winter. Yeah. Uh, I think our economy is teetering uh, on the brink in the, mm-hmm. of uh, not that it already isn't really. Uh, the numbers are still positive here, but we're, we're in a recession as well. Yeah. As good as. Yeah. And speaking of which here, just some more insight as to what's happening in the Euro area. Of course, you know, at any moment now, there's going to, I mean, like between now and the next, you know, ECB meeting, something is bound to break in one of those EU countries there for sure. But here's, you know, to play into what you were talking about, about higher energy costs. So it says higher energy prices push inflation to near 9% in 19 Euro uh, using countries. So, um, not good news whatsoever across the pond. So, but yet, of course, the U.S. has their own issues as well as all the developed world nations. And we, we barely talk about Australia, New Zealand, other nations like that, just because I don't really get a chance to follow. Yeah, but they're in, they're in the same in the same boat. Um, right. Australia, New Zealand. <laughs> They've had a housing bubble in Australia and, and interest rates are rising there yeah. uh, very sharply. Even the Bank of Canada um, near you, uh, mm-hmm. just uh, across the border, they raised rates by 1%. They surprised everyone. Yeah. So... Let me uh, so let me just check and see what uh, central bank interest rates because I usually follow the uh, see what the latest news is as far as all the rate recent hikes and so let me type in real quick and see so we gotta do we do have a couple new uh, so here we have uh, recent uh, interest rate hikes so we got America so we're now at two and a half percent uh, up from one point seven five we got Hungarian went up a uh, entire point. Russia, it went down. So out of all these nations here, we got the only green here from Russia. You see the Bank of Canada went from one and a half to two and a half. Yeah. So mm-hmm. everybody's tightening right into a, you know, what, what, is, is it good to say, Mario? It, you know, because we know that the mainstream media is lying to us about what's really happening. Proof is shown, two contracting quarters and all the other disposable income lack thereof and all time high debt, all time high this, all time high that. That you know, we are in a recession officially. We know that we've been talking about this for quite some time. Never really recovered from the prior hiccups, but it's coming full tilt now. So, based upon what we're seeing, would you say this could be on the cusp of a depressionary style event, or would you go that far yet, or is not, or, or we, or what do you think? Because well, it's not like it, people, the, the food lines are long, but we had technology to cover a lot of things up to make it appear as if things are not that bad. But I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I think we've been in a depression, uh, believe it or not, since 2008. Mm. And they've covered it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's all smokes and mirror, smoke and mirrors. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, the upper middle class and the very wealthy are still doing well. They're like spending because asset prices have been kept up. But now asset prices are falling. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, uh, we could eventually have a, a depression. We definitely, uh, you know, uh, a depression that even the the politicians and economists have to uh, admit to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, yes, uh, the other thing people forget about the GDP. Yes, mm-hmm. it came out negative. Two consecutive quarters uh, is a, a technically a recession, yeah. uh, despite what they tell us. But we're still running a huge... Uh, budget deficits governments mm-hmm. around the world i think the us is just below 10 percent, around seven yeah. percent the uk the same so uh, the equation for gdp adds government spending so if the government is spending uh more like seven percent extra of gdp it means that if you had a balanced budget if you had a sound you know a government that wasn't profligate the uh, economy would probably actually be contracting Mm-hmm. So I think it's even worse. <laughs> and that's why I said we've been in a depression since uh, 2008, because growth, if you take out after 2020, because you had a lot of ups and downs and, yeah. uh, you know, the lockdowns. But up until then, uh, growth had averaged. You had barely any year where GDP grew by 3%. Mm-hmm. And the deficits were running like 2 3 4 The last uh, year that Trump was in office it was a five percent budget deficit so yes uh the economies are it, it, they're not really doing well in my opinion right right and so speaking of which uh 
let's uh, I want to share with you a, a, a clip from was it I think four four administrations ago on how it was relatively easier to define a recession at that time, but all of a sudden now they're rewriting the rules. I even saw that Wikipedia is also updated their definition of recession. But here we'll have Mr. Clinton. This was in the year 2000. Mr. President, what do you think about a recession? Well, a recession is two quarters in a row of negative growth. I don't think we're going to have that. But we couldn't keep up 5% growth a year. I'll leave it right there. It's but. funny. Uh, Bush looks quite nervous, doesn't he? It looks like that. <laughs> He looks like a freshman in the first, right. day, first day of college listening to a, a, a senior or something. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in December of 2000. So uh, yeah. we were heading into something very that started yeah. all this stuff. Off. It was after the, the hanging Chad event. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Let's, the thing uh, is, uh, Mike, yeah. they are yeah. changing the definition of a recession. They also mm -hmm. have changed over the decades the definition of inflation. Mm. And that's why we're in this, uh, how can I say, in this situation where you have uh, the the top 1% owning, you know, almost 40% of the wealth. Yeah. Uh, wealth inequality really high. People, a lot of people out of work because the unemployment numbers don't count people that have given up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's... Um, they're trying to uh, hide the fact that uh, under uh, the fiat currency system that we've had since 1971, mm -hmm. it's really hurt the the general public, the people at the bo bottom 50%. Yeah, and yeah. it's really helped the, the wealthy, just like it does, just like in third world countries where they've had rampant inflation. Yeah. Uh, let me see. There, uh, there's that. Uh, there's a screenshot that's circulating out there about the wealth transfer over the last two years where it's a news clip this show or, or a news clip that shows the top part says that you know the average working class lost 3.2 billion then at the very bottom it says but the you know billionaires have gained 3.7 billion worth of new accumulated wealth trillion i would say no trillion i'm sorry a trillion i'm sorry yeah so yeah i'm trying to i meant to find out but that's what comes to mind when you know you talked about the uh ultimately the wealth transfer that's taking place now but let's touch on uh, how people, of course, everyone here plugged in, know how to protect and preserve themselves. But I want to share that uh, screenshot that you sent me about gold and that projection there. Uh, give me the rundown on this. I didn't have a chance to look into it, but I just see yeah. the trajectory of gold. Yeah, the guy who posted that is, uh, if you roll, yeah, Grady. He's a really good uh, technical analyst. So he's mm -hmm. basically saying, uh, that gold still very undervalued in terms of the money supply M2, yeah, and uh, and the fact that they can't stop really printing, uh, he's basically saying we're still it's still early days uh, yeah. in terms of the bull market where the you know the bull market in gold is like a bear market in uh, paper money, and I think he's right, and, and that's why. Uh, <laughs> Un unless I have an emergency, I'll keep stacking and uh, keep holding on to yeah. gold and silver. I, I think silver is going to uh, do even better than gold. Yeah, I do agree. Um, all right, let's get to some questions then, just because this will be a shorter uh, live stream because you have to you know, get ready to get going. But uh, let's get into some questions. So feel free to throw out some thoughts, ideas, suggestions, anything worth touching on that we haven't touched on because we kind of skimmed through this prior week's event. But feel free to ask some questions. Oh, there's we'll one here on. from... Uh, Ita Wam Bamingo, why wow. don't we change the definition of central bank? <laughs> yeah, we have. Be your own bank. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, be your own central bank. That's right. Or or the best uh, definition of uh, the best definition for central bank is that we don't have a definition for it, that we uh we don't have central banks. We should because it, it's not a in a free market, in a free free uh <laughs> Uh, republic or whatever yeah you, you don't need a, a monopoly to control the money you should have to let the market do that it's one of the 10 planks of the communist manifesto yeah. uh, uh central uh banking uh here's another one here uh let me see i saw this about the uh matthew mitch said, explain the 2.2 quadrillion in derivative market so Derivatives is something I'm not well versed in, but I know that's an underlying problem. That's that's probably the biggest problem, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Uh, about this. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, 
I, I have a playlist about derivatives on my channel and I used to work in the derivatives market. The 2.2 quadrillion is basically the notional amount mm -hmm. and, and derivatives are just basically bets on a, on the market. Mm -hmm. They're not like, a, let's say you don't buy a government bond, you bet on the government bond, that's a derivative. And uh, it's usually, it, it's always uh, when uh, banks and uh, hedge funds and individuals when they speculate on derivatives, it never goes on the balance sheet. So if uh, JP Morgan buys, uh, let's say, one uh, gold futures, it means they buy 100 ounces. Well, they have claim to 100 ounces, but they only have to put 5% down. So the notional amount is like uh, the size of the contract, but it doesn't mean that money changes hand. Uh, yeah. The problem is when a, a counterparty defaults, <laughs> that two. 2.2 quadrillion comes into play. And that's what happened uh, when Lehman collapsed. Yeah. Because the uh, bankers, their excuse is that 2.2 quadrillion doesn't matter because it all nets out. You know, you're long, I'm short, and, and we only like send each other margin, you know, a, a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the problem is when a counterparty defaults, the whole notional amount become comes into play. Mm -hmm. And that's the danger. Unfortunately, uh, these derivatives uh, markets were not regulated after the Lehman collapse, especially the over-the-counter derivatives, mm -hmm. uh, which is not, they're not traded on an exchange. They're like uh, private bets between banks and like, uh, you need to watch uh, the big short. That, that yeah. they give you a good explanation. But, oh yeah, it's a big time bomb. And, and, and you can bet uh, in the next crisis, financial crisis, when they have to print trillions again, it's going to have something to do with that market. Right. And I, I use the uh, extras pyramid, you know, referring to how, you know, at the very top of that pyramid are, is the mysterious two point whatever or so quadrillion dollars worth the derivative uh, uh, liabilities up there. And I'm thinking like in order to to have that stuff remain uh, worthwhile, they're going to have to print damn near as, just as much in dollar terms to try to counter all those losses because nobody knows who owns what at the top of that pyramid. So I'm saying worst case scenario, we should expect at least another two quadrillion if they can get that much out of the remaining protein power of the dollar, but it won't happen. But that's how much funny currency will be needed. And to speaking of which real quick, before we get to more questions, uh, I just typed in, uh, well, oops, let me see. Give me one second. I apologize. So here's just a visual aid from, uh, uh, was it uh, visual capitalists just showing how the extra pyramids, you know, were inverted, but here's the silver market. Of you know, 43.9 billion, all the way cryptocurrency, all the way down, and all the liabilities as we go down, stock market, money supply, global debt, and then you get down to the derivatives. <laughs> this thing just continues to go on. So here's this is where derivatives start at. Yeah. It says 11.6 trillion, notional 555.8 trillion, and this thing just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that notional is underestimated, I would say. Or one here, here's another one. Says another yeah. one quadrillion, and this thing keeps going. So that's yeah. uh, that's stuff that we don't, you know. We don't know what's in that stuff. Anyway, someone asked, uh, are, aren't most uh, derivatives interest rate uh, swaps? Uh, interest rate swaps are a big part of the OTC derivatives. Yes, that's right. Uh, here's a question. It says, uh, how can our government keep info from American people and call it protection? Ah, uh, yeah, Because that... it's not your government. <laughs> Right, right. It's, it's you know they they're not like they're you know governments even here in the UK they're supposed to be serving the public but they're not they're serving uh, another power be it corporate whatever power right. that they're not really uh, serving us unfortunately and it's, most people most people think they are right. It's becoming more and more obvious at that. But here's a question from Ed: it says, If the feds have held things together since 2008, uh, they can't. So he. So he says they can't do it another 14 years. So if they've been able to do it for this long, what can keep them from doing it for an extended period? And my response would be, I don't think they want to. I think I literally think they really want to bring this down. They just need the ultimate excuse to do so, so they can usher in that next reset. Like the, the reset is a plan, how it plays out, who's ahead of it, who knows. But at the end of the day, CBDC, social credit score, you can't do this without having to ask permission from your go your government as a part of the plan. So that's what I think they're working towards. So however that plays out, that's that's the future I think they want to create. Now, can we do something against against that? Sure. 
resist don't comply as best you can tell your friends and family not to do the same thing and that right there is the resistance anyway ran uh what else we got question wise uh there's a lot of questions in here it says how long can they keep the fiat currency debt game going china is at breaking point italy japan etc uh, hopefully a digital currency system uh, linked with carbon credits are rejected taking away freedom yeah i saw something about china uh recently uh bailing out the uh real estate industry i didn't dive too deep into it but it looks like the chinese you know contagion is continuing to grow well, yeah i think the fiat currency system is on its last legs i mean that's what the uh, rising prices are all about and uh as i said they earlier in the uh in our uh live stream they cannot um unless they want everything to implode and you have uh it's going to be you know the dutch farmers and uh, sri lanka that's going to look like a picnic mm -hmm. so they're going to have to come in and uh keep uh inflating it's inflate or die and, and no. someone asked earlier about if they can keep it going for 14 years yeah they, they've been able to keep it going but we're s seeing all the signs of currency collapse because the way they've kept it going is by creating more and more of this uh, funny money right i do agree i do agree all right uh let's get to another question or two and then we can uh get ready to log off and uh but i want to you know remind people just by because i love my visual aids uh let me just put this up real quick so any, any last questions feel free to throw it out there but remember uh we were told that at this time we were experiencing extreme inflation because the currencies are on fire and therefore we're experiencing it so uh, everything that we're experiencing is by design however it plays out we'll see but um this is not done by accident so we're at that point we're, we're at a turning point whether or not we want to admit it so uh what else anything else out there you see mario uh, uh how are the banks allowed to trade their own stock through the otc using continuous settlement uh, I'm not sure whether they trade, you know, banks trade their own stock through uh, derivatives. Uh, there is quite a bit of compliance. Um, yeah, so I'm not too sure about that question. But I don't really think, you know, if you work for a Goldman, uh, that uh, they would be happy or Citibank. And I'm not, like, defending them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think uh, they would trade their own stock. Maybe for a client, if a client wants to buy Goldman Sachs stock, <laughs> he can. But for themselves, I don't think they take positions. Uh, yeah. I mean, individual bankers, they 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 could buy shares in, in, in the bank. But I don't think it's like a policy mm -hmm. where, you, you know, banks will uh, manipulate their own stock price, yeah. uh, even though nothing is uh, impossible on, on Wall Street. <laughs> Uh, here's another question here. This will get ready to wind down off this one. Uh, it says, if all, if almost all countries are in debt, who do who do everyone owe? <laughs> anyone uh, who uh, anyone who's holding uh, fiat currency is a creditor. Yeah. You know, if you've got uh, even a dollar in the bank, mm -hmm. you you're a, you're a, a debtor. Uh, a pension funds, uh, government. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyone who's got uh, who thinks they have an asset or some money, they're yeah. they're the you know they're the people who are old, right? And I was also what came to mind is you know the 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 unborn, the children that are being brought into oh, the yeah. current monetary paradigm, and the ones that are not born yet because the financial calamity is going to fall on future generations and or lack thereof. So yeah, <sighs> all right. Well, shipping containers are backed up. Yeah, lots of things to touch on, but let's get ready to dial down. As always, it's going to be a shorter live stream, but want to definitely connect. And uh, yeah, so looking forward, uh, what, what's what's we at the end of the month here? Uh, August is coming up. Who knows what they're going to throw our way, but we all know, take advantage of the opportunities you have. Use whatever disposable income, in my opinion, to uh, prepare and brace for impact because it's happening. So we're ba basically being given more time by the politicians lying about there not being a recession because we're witnessing all this green with the uh, meadows and crypto, whatever. So they're trying to buy time, in my opinion, until something. But anyway, take advantage of it. So anything you want to leave us with, Mario? No, not really. I mean, I agree with you on that. And uh, yeah, um, don't uh, don't make uh, decisions uh, about your business or your spending based on what you're told by the mainstream media and, and politicians. But I, I'm sure most of you don't already. 
Right, right. And that's a good thing about it. everybody that's plugged into your community as well as mine. We all know what time it is. And I would I would imagine all the people who listen to channels such as yours and mine are already well prepared and well beyond prepared as the best that they can, having food and metals and ammunition and everything else they could uh, possibly get a hold of. But anyway, but keep make sure you stay prayed up, enjoy the weekend, get out and have, get some sunlight and uh just you know be be pop. Find some some good news to share with somebody, you know, and level somebody, get an extra hug or something from somebody, but everything will be just fine. But anyway, be blessed, be safe, have a great weekend. See you guys next week. Peace.